Hi, this is the second part of the video uh, on joining two pieces together. Um, what was going on in the last um, video uh, about half an hour ago is my shirt was catching inside the piece as I was trying to put my arm as deep as I could get, so it was pulling. Um, and uh, so, duct tape. All right, so, and I'm wearing a nice shirt. I got this in High Falls, New York. My wife did the design for it when we used to live in High Falls, New York, so I don't want to get clay all over it. Um, anyway, I also, um, during that half an hour period, used a paint stripping gun, which is basically, a, a, you know, it's noisy, so I didn't want to do it while you were there, but it puts out hot air that will melt paint. So basically, this is a really good way of firming the clay up. Now, what was going on is, the join area was very soft, um, so as my shirt was catching on and pulling at the top, it was starting to soften and move that area down there. So I basically just duct taped my shirt and heated up this area here and all the way down to there for about half an hour uh, so that it's now firm enough so it won't be catching on that. So as you join these together, it's a good idea to firm up your area after you've done it for a little bit. Otherwise, it's just so soft that as you're pulling on the top, it will actually buckle it. And also, this is not a lot of people use propane torches. I don't like the fire risk for those. This makes a lot of noise when it's on, so I can remember. But for, you know, fl an open flame in my studio, and it's a 125 year old barn, I'm not, I'm not keen on that. So anyway, um, so uh, I, I use a heat stripping gun, which works really well. You just have to remember to unplug it. There you go. All right, so this is pretty much close to being done. What I was doing while I was using the heat gun is I had these little metal ribs and I was basically pushing in where it was starting to soften and buckle out a little bit just by doing that. And then basically you can smooth out that join area so that you, but you shouldn't be able to see it when you finish this. It's very thick at that area there so I will probably try and take some of that off on the inside as well as the outside. Just because of firing, you want to make sure your piece is heating up evenly, and this would take longer to heat up than, say, here or here, and there's a potential for a crack because of the, uh, you know, uneven heating. So, uh, but anyway, so that is the shape that I want, only I want to give it a little extra oomph, so I'm just going to try re-throwing the top a little bit. So I'll have a, can you see the top? Yep, okay, so we'll keep it going. Um, so let's see what, I don't want to add much water to this because it is already, you know, soft enough to throw. Water is a lubricant, so it enables you to glide over the surface of the clay. But look, I'm not using water and I'm gliding over the surface of the clay. Why is that? Well, it's even. It's soft clay, it's evenly moist, and I'm able to throw and get a little extra height of this. And this is why it's important that you firmed up that join area, because obviously with no water, you're dragging the clay a little bit. And see how I lifted my thumbs together there? I feel like when my thumbs are touching, I get a little extra control. I'm watching that join area the whole time to make sure that it isn't starting to buckle again. Now I've heard terms of dry throwing for this technique. So I'm sure if you search that on the internet you might be able to find other potters who can do this a lot better. I don't use it much. I tend to use a lot of water when I'm throwing. I probably gained an inch or so in height. Actually, the shelf is here. I don't know, but earlier in the video, maybe we can see. Now, I cut a lump off the top because it was too tiny a hole. So, look. Move my chair back. Good idea to keep a sponge to wipe off the lumps of clay that build up on your hand. Now, it's wide enough at the... 
might get a reach down there and push that one wall out a little bit that was underneath the join area. I don't want to change the shape too much though. You can trim obviously when you get your form that you're after. Now these are going outside so they'll have to take a little bit of old bird poop and the occasional hailstorm maybe. We don't get much hail in Nova Scotia, we hardly get thunderstorms. There's, we're on, surrounded by ocean, I think it's that temperate type climate like Britain gets. Getting up there now, I, I know I'm getting a little extra height, but I'm not wetting the clay down again since the weight of clay on top of that bottom area is a lot. And also because it's an outdoor piece, you don't want it thin, because it should be able to take a little bit of I'm going to widen the top here so the bird bath bowl will actually fit on a it's fairly securely. I'm going to need my pin in a second to trim off. And you also don't want this thin. Okay, let's trim this off. That's the top area. on that area because that's the bit that has got to be smooth when they when I put the bird bath on. I won't be able to do that now because um, this clay is way too soft. That'll be after the firing probably before I put it on. I might even use plumber's putty when you put the bird bath on to soften the contact area of where the big bowl is sitting on top which would Plumber's body never totally dries. Because you don't want the hard ceramic edges banging on each other when you put it down, otherwise you might chip it. There's a substance called uh, Quake Hold that I use sometimes to put my pieces together especially if they're in an exhibition somewhere. All right, so let's stand back and have a look. The middle area still has a little kink to it, but um, but you see, you know, it's a lot cleaner now all the way up. I will be trimming this, because I'm going to do some fluting or carving in the bottom, um, but that's basically it. So I've got a piece that's probably, I don't know, to where, let me get a tape measure, I can probably measure it for you. But it was, I think the pieces of clay were about 12 pounds a piece. Well, I don't have a tape measure handy, so I can't tell. I'll measure it later and post it on there in the comments. Uh, so, I haven't posted much this summer because of the tourist season. Um, because we get interrupted a lot, um, but it's September and then October, now it's quietening down. It's a really good color time, you know, trees are beautiful this time of year, of course. Um, so if you're in Nova Scotia, stop by. Uh, we're on the South Shore, right on Highway 331, which is the lighthouse route, because as you're driving along, there are lighthouse out all the way along. Um, and uh, it's right on the ocean, it's a beautiful drive along here. Hopefully the pandemic's over, a lot of you can come visit. All right, so uh, Vaughan Smith, uh, my website's westcoatbellpottery.ca. You can check me up on Facebook just by putting in Vaughan L. Smith Potter. I guess that will find me. Uh, post lots of photographs on Facebook and a video of my gallery. Um, so uh, just uh, 
you know, take care of yourselves and have a great fall. Bye.